Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Can I have your attention? Perhaps you're all changing or something. You will not be disappointed. Reverend Dr. Also, comes from a very active church. The reason that I was interested in inviting her is because the church she belongs to and is the associate minister in St. Tanner Chapel AME Church, which is close by. They have 31 ministries led by 19 ministers. So I think we can learn something from those presentations. I've asked the Reverend. Melanie Gracious God, we thank you for bringing us here today. We thank you for knitting us together and care for each other. And we thank you for being with us as we walk the sometimes difficult path of following Jesus in being your hands and your feet and your heart in this world. We ask that you bless us to hear what is being shared with us. And we ask that you bless this food, that it nourish our bodies, that we may be strengthened for your service. Amen. 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 So while you're eating, uh, Paul will speak on the Pattern of the Chapel AME Ministries and the Gouet Services. Let me just say once again, thank you so, so, so very much for having me here. I can't wait to get some of that good food that you eat. <laughs> you can have some of mine. No, that's okay. It smells good. And it's just good when brethren come together and are able to worship and fellowship one with the other. And I just think this is marvelous. I was truly excited when Reverend Polk asked, is that how you pronounce your name? Yes, thank okay. you, congratulations. Thank you, asked me to come and speak with you all. I met him when I first started doing some volunteer work with Duet. Duet is a nonprofit organization you get a chance, you can see this display that works with health and the aging here in Arizona. And its primary purpose is to work with our homebound citizens throughout the valley in various areas. But our main goal with that is to make, try to do as much as we possibly can to keep our homebound seniors self-sufficient so that they will not have to go <clears throat> into um, other housing developments and so forth. So we're excited about that. In addition to that, when I spoke with Reverend Polk, he told me, when I told him I was at Tana Chapel, he became very excited because he knows my pastor, the Reverend uh, Benjamin Thomas, and they have known each other for a number of years. Tana Chapel, we're happy to say, <laughs> was just accepted into the Historical Society here. We have been um, uh, here in Phoenix, Arizona for 126 years. So it's longer than Arizona has been a state. And we're excited, we, we, we're celebrating this year our uh, 126th anniversary, and we're really, really, really excited about it. We are firm believers in, 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 in celebrating God's presence and celebrating his power through worship, uh, through the word, and through community. And we know that in order for the church to grow, it has to be able to grow within the community of people in which we are surrounded. So I never counted up the ministries we have. I know that we're, we're busy. <laughs> At least I'm busy anyway. <laughs> but um, we have some fantabulous uh, ministries. And the ministries are there primarily to assist us in ministering to people. 
We love ministering to people. We minister to our young people. We minister to our seniors. We minister to, to uh, we have a prison ministry. And let me just call off some of the ministries that we have within our church so that you can kind of get a feel as to what our mission is. And then I'll go back and let you know what the mission is. But we have a cancer support group ministry. We have a celebrate recovery ministry. That has to do with people who are suffering with alcoholism. We have a child care ministry. We have a Christian education ministry. We have a couple support group ministry. We have a disciple ministry. We have a duet ministry. When I became active with duet, I made sure that Tanner Chapel would become involved with duet. I told him it was hard for me to go out and tell the story if we weren't going to be a part of it, right? <laughs> we also have economic development and empowerment ministry, emergency response team ministry, family enriched support ministry, financial literacy programs, Foster Care and Suitcase Initiative, Intercessory Prayer Group Ministry, Latino Outreach Ministry, Liturgical Dance Ministry, Marriage and Family Counseling Ministry, Media Ministry, Men of Tana Ministry, Mentorship Ministry, Pain Seminary um, Southwest Satellite, um, Performing Arts and Drama Ministry, the prison ministry, the senior daycare center ministry, the study of the word, we call that so, which is a, a, a Bible uh, Institute school of ministry, widows and widows ministry, women of China ministry, women's book club, youth and young adult ministry. Uh, now that's all I have on paper. <laughs> That's all I have on paper, but I like to tell newcomers when they come to our church, if there is something that you are in need of, and we don't have a ministry here, then perhaps God is sending you to put that ministry in our church, because we believe that when God sends us people, it's for a reason. And we're not just there to be stained glass windows. And we're not just there to be a church on the corner. But we're there to be a church that's actively involved with community like you guys are, actively involved with social justice issues, actively involved in providing health care services, actively involved in ministering to our youth, and to those who are not in a position to help themselves at this point. I didn't see where um, they had our food, 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 and they, they don't have this on here. They're going to be in big trouble. <laughs> wow. Right. Our, our food, our pantry. Yes. And that's not on here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so we're going to be in big trouble. We have a pantry ministry that's very, very active. Um, that's open, uh, officially open two days a week. But whenever someone here comes with a need, then we try to make sure that we take care of those needs. I was sharing with uh, Reverend Cope just a few moments ago that our pastor has been pastor at that church for 21 years, Benjamin N. Thomas. And the A&E uh, denomination is an itinerant uh, ministry, which means that pastors are subject to move every year. And we've been blessed enough to have him there for 21 years. But we're real scared this year. All of us are mm -hmm. feeling kind of funny, you know, because the bishop may say, you've been here long enough now. It's time for you to go. So we're hoping that doesn't happen. But in the meantime, we are still going on with, with, with business as, as usual. <laughs> Our pastor is one that reaches out to the larger faith community in terms of serving and being of service. 
and and walking down the hall going through a little while ago so many people came up saying that they know pastor thomas and they had been at tana and they were with uh pastor thomas and and reverend stewart and bishop thomas this past weekend for whatever reason i don't know what it was but it's just good to know that all of us are in communication with one another because no church is an island we can only be as effective as our sister or brother church is within the community that we serve. Um, somebody uh, had asked, well, what is your mission statement? Because it seems that you have so much going on. It seems that you have so many ministries. And sometimes on Sunday when they look up in the pulpit, they see all these ministers up there. And, and, and I guess pastor said, okay, I guess I'm getting beat up, so some of you ministers are going to have to get out of this church. <laughs> and I'm going to start sending you to other A&E churches within the area. And that's what he's done. And just this past Sunday, two of our ministers have been dispersed to other A&E churches within the area. So I said to him, I said, are you ready to send me out? <laughs> so I don't think he is right now. I'm doing too many ministries in the church, so that's the way you keep yourself, in, that's the way I keep myself there, to make sure I keep a job created going, right? So pray right. for me. But no, our mission is to be a Christ-centered body of believers, providing the spiritual foundation to transform lives from Christ-like living to the glory of God. You know, we know that it's not even about us. <clears throat> but it's about the Christ that's in us. And it's not about us just serving within our immediate church, but being able to provide, pardon me, the spiritual foundation to transform lives throughout all of God's kingdom. So it means that we have to make sure that we are constantly involved in kingdom building. We are a firm believer that uh, in tithing, but we believe that when the church tithes to us, that we have a responsibility to tithe back to the community. So we make sure that we are tithing back to the community. And I believe that's another reason why Canada chapter is, chapter is so blessed. Because we're always giving. And as a result of that, God is always providing increases. Not just monetarily. I'm not talking about monetarily, but I'm talking about spiritual increase. I'm talking about people coming into the house of the Lord who are willing to share. People coming into the house of the Lord who are willing to give and who are willing to reach outside of their comfort zones in order to transform somebody's life. Um, we believe that God is always able to bless more than we are able to receive. We believe that God is always ready to bless beyond our capacity to receive. We believe that God is always prepared to grow us more than we want to grow. You know, sometimes some, some of our older, more mature members who have been there for a while, when pastor talks about, okay, it's time to build a new church, many of them don't want to build a new church. <coughs> But we are saying to them, we have to build. We can't continue to stay as we are if we want to serve our youthful community, if we want to have ministries in place that will be able to do the kind of outreach that's needed in order to serve the people. So sometimes we have to grow. People become comfortable with where they are. We believe that God is always ready to take us further than what we want to go. So that's why our pastor is always telling us, the ministerial staff particularly, that we have to be continuous learners. Don't become too comfortable with who you are, but keep your mind open so that you are willing to grow and expand your horizons because God is always sending somebody in with an issue that's a little bit different than what you've ever heard before. And with that in place, it means that we have to be able to serve folks as they come in the door. We believe also that God is always ready to stretch us 
further than what we want to be stretched. And I told him, I said, you know what? I know why God has kept you here for 20 years. And it's because you have a pastor's heart. Everybody who has been called is not necessarily a pastor. Uh, but he has a pastor's heart, meaning that it takes a whole lot to deal with folks sometimes. And in a church, you have all kinds of personalities, and you have all kinds of attitudes, and you have all kinds of people who are not on the same age at the same time all the time. And he has been able to take that congregation and do it in such a uh, 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 way that, that, that he allows his humility to show, and, and he has such patience that he is able to take the most hard-headed person and get them to reach consensus so that we can be about the business of, of growing God's people. And we are really, really grateful for that. So we're praying that this year he is not moved out, but that he will continue to stay. And it's because we have become comfortable with it. So when I heard that your pastor <laughs> had just retired and he'd been here 20 years. And I said, okay, God, why are you sending him to this church? <laughs> are you trying to get me ready for something? Oh, <laughs> oh, okay. Amen. Because I don't believe God's the God of happenstance or circumstance. So maybe he's just trying to get my heart right so I'll be able to accept change. Is it working? No. <laughs> run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, we can be renewed in our minds by the work and power of God in us. And in our um, uh, uh, um, annual program that we submitted to the bishop at our conference last year, we indicated to him that we believe that God is calling Tana to renew our minds <coughs> by the knowledge we gain from the study of the Word. We believe that the purpose of being changed by God is so that we can know what His divine will is for our lives. And we believe that God will give us guidance and direction that will help us to, to, to give to others as He has given to us as he did with the church over in the Book of Acts. Now, I've only been here uh, six years. I came from North Carolina. <laughs> and believe it or not, I was with the United Church of Christ in North Carolina. All right. All right. Yeah. 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 Macedonia, UCC. <laughs> Just small world. Yeah, it is. It is. It is. So when I came here and went down to visit at Tana, I, was, I immediately fell in love with Tana. I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with their hearts. I fell in love with their energy. I fell in love with their spirit. I fell in love with who they were. And then I met the pastor. And once I met him, then I could understand and I knew why they were as gracious and as loving as they are. Because we believe that we have to reach beyond ourselves into a greater world where people may be different than we are, they may think different than we do, but all of us are sons and daughters of a holy God. And we have been charged with the responsibility to go forth and to build the kingdom. One of the areas that we are particularly working on this year, and I would hope it has something to do with me, but we're looking at doing more work with our senior population. Uh, Arizona is getting an increase of seniors 50 and over 
at an alarm, not alarming, but an amazing, amazing rate. And one of the reasons is because many of us probably moved out here, uh, or you moved out here when you were young and in careers and had families, and since that time, since that time, the children have grown into adults. You may have moved away. Um, you may have retired and so forth. And many of our seniors are now in need of the services that are being offered by the Duet organization. And Duet, when I went there to volunteer, I said, oh my, this organization's mission is in line with the mission at the church where I am. And that is to be able to serve and that is to be able to assist, and that is to be able to facilitate our seniors, particularly where they are at this point in, our, in their lives. Because we know had it not been for them, Tana wouldn't be where Tana is. So we believe now is the time to pay forward, and now is the time to give back to those seniors who have served us so wonderfully all these years. And one of the ways that Tana is able to fulfill that mission is to line up with Duet. And that's why I'm here today, to really talk about a church who has the mission of Christ, who has the mission of kingdom building, who has the mission of serving people, to connect with a nonprofit, and that's important, a nonprofit who has been around for 30 years and does not charge its neighbors. We call our 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 our, our neighbor, we call our the persons that we help our neighbors. We don't call them customers. We don't call them um, um, clients. Right? Thank you. We call them neighbors because they are our neighbors so that we can go into the homes and provide transportation uh, to and from doctor's appointments, that we can provide friendly visiting by making telephone calls or just going and spending an hour or two hours with someone who is not able to come out by offering computer services and the computer We've been blessed, Duet has been blessed with computers donated to them, and we're able to take these computers into our neighbors' homes and actually train our neighbors in how to use the computer. And I got so excited because I had one neighbor, she was 94 years old, and she started learning how to use that computer, and man, she's awesome. <laughs> she is awesome <laughs> because she has learned how to go on the internet, She's learned how to connect with her family that's in another state and her grandkids. She's even learned how to do Skype. I don't know how to what? do Skype. Right. I have trouble. I know. I don't even know how to do Skype. Right. And she's so excited. And she, in turn, is going back to her Wednesday Bible study group. And she's challenging the, 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 the members of her body study, uh, Bible study group to get active with the computer, and that way they wouldn't be so alone all the time. But they could Aww. get connected Beautiful to a bigger ministry. world. Yes, get connected to a bigger world, and and, and change lives. Excited. Yes, exactly. Because they would have ordinarily sat there at home and yes. did nothing, but now yes. they can speak to the family and see them through exactly. Skype. Exactly. Exactly. Who would thought? That's right. It's exciting. It's exciting, and and Beautiful. we're having good times with her. She's yeah. even. She's starting to do a newsletter between she and her members of her Bible study group. And this is so that they can understand just how important they are. You never lose your value. Your conditions may change, but you're still precious. You're still, seniors are so precious to us because you have so much history, you have so much wisdom, you have so much understanding, and so much to give back to a population now that really needs you. And you don't understand just how bad they need you. So this is another way that Tanner has been able to fulfill his mission is by working with uh, Duet. 
also in duet is just not just the, the offering of the services in terms of the homebound population, but we have a grandparents raising grandchildren program with duet. And interestingly enough, God bless Canada, this year, recently, with working with the city of Phoenix and putting up brand new apartments for grandparents raising grandchildren. That's Dan's and They are beautiful. And it's called Grand Families Place of Phoenix. Uh, it's 56 units. Uh, it's low income housing tax credits. Is reduced rents for grandparents raising grandchildren. And we are working in concert with Duet and with their grandparents raising grand raising grandchildren's component. So that we can tell them first off, okay, you gotta get busy and get down and start filling out the forms and stuff so that you can get one of these apartments. So it's real exciting. I can also say that um, when Child Protective Services places a grandchild with a grandparent, they used to fund them. Yes. No more. Yes. What? They yes. cut the funding. They cut the funding. They cut the allowances. And so our grandparents raising grandchildren are more in need than they were. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And that's why I'm, I'm just so excited about uh, how God is working in the life of Tana and in the life of Duet in terms of bringing those two ministries together and that way because of the collaboration because of the commitment and, and, and uh, we're able to, we'll be able to reach more people than we would be able to do it individually so so we're really 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 excited about that uh, I don't know what else to tell you about Tana. We're hoping, after I heard your, your uh, Pastor Judy talk this morning, and Reverend Cody, I'm hoping that because we do have a prison ministry at our church, that we will be able to get together with what you all are about to do with reference to prison reform. I'm excited about being able to go back to my pastor to say that there's a church in the area <coughs> who's on the same wavelength and maybe we need to do some collaboration mm -hmm. because it's better for a group to come together than individually. Yes, sir. Right. I, I don't know if you're, you may not be the person that the Maricopa Interfaith HIV and AIDS Alliance has been in contact with mm -hmm. at your church, mm -hmm. but Tanner has been invited to participate with the Arizona Black AIDS Task Force as well as Maricopa Interfaith HIV Great. AIDS Alliance, Great. which is sort of headquartered at this church, okay. to participate in things like the National Day of HIV Testing, okay. which is this Wednesday. We yes. that announced from our, yes. our pulpit this morning. Yes. And then to join with us and other churches in addressing this in a um, concerted effort mm -hmm. to the government of the Republican government authorities. Wonderful. So uh, again, I don't. Uh, you may not be the right uh, person in, in that we is has been contact. Mm -hmm. with, but certainly Tanner is, I believe, going to be involved in qualitative testing. Here Wonderful. And Wonderful. So I do know. Yeah. Yeah. That. I do know that Tanner has been involved with Black AIDS Day right. in the past. And, and I think we're having another event with you on September 8th. Wonderful. At Wonderful. That's great. That's so this, great. this church supports many of the things that are going on yes. with you already at Tampa. That's great. And that's great to know. I know when I told Pastor I was coming this morning, he was excited. He said, how'd you get there? <laughs> I said, oh. <laughs> How can our purpose, friend and Jesse and your help, can our church purpose and play more with tiny programs so and do and all that kind of stuff? Who did the contact? Well, can you give us the contact for that? Yeah, I'm going to leave my name and the TE up. Uh, Reverend Cook already has it. Do we have any other contacts with the contact through our, you know, our church? Yeah, household. that's what I'm saying. We need to, I need to get with them <coughs> and get with Pastor to see how we can have 
an active collaboration going on all the time. Because we're so close. Yeah, I, I know where you're at. Yeah. I've been there before. Yeah. I've seen people there. Yeah. After a uh, COVID program. Right. Yeah. And I've seen you there. <laughs> okay. You know, but, I know yeah. where you're at. Yeah. You know, but the thing is, the awareness about the church right. is getting more aware of what you're doing. Exactly. So we can contribute along with you. Right. You're not just trying to with you. Yeah. As a member of the church. Exactly. So, you know, the purpose of this meeting is to develop collaboration. Yes. Yeah, that's what we're going to do follow up like we do with the other speakers. Oh, great. So, if you want to stay in touch with her, she'll give you all the information that you And I'll keep in touch. And then you get this. Yeah. All right, thank you. Because we want to make sure that this is ongoing. This doesn't stop. Yes, ma'am. I see a mention of AmeriCorps on the agenda. Yes. I'd like to hear more about that. Well, let me tell you. We are so upset. I'm a volunteer AmeriCorps. And we have been around for two years. We thought we were going to be around for four years because we had the money. The AmeriCorps program here under the Department on the Area Agency on Aging is a model program. But let me tell you what happened. When the RFP came out, a human error. Somebody did not get the information to the people they needed to get it to in time. So we were not in time to fill out the information to be refunded for another year. So except that the AmeriCorps program will end in this, in this area, September the 30th. But we're all praying that somehow or another something will happen that will allow the area agency to find another funding source so that they can keep the America, AmeriCorps program going here in the city of Phoenix because we are a modern program. So is it senior adult volunteer? Yes, it is. It's this one here. Yeah. Well, I think we're only one of a very few senior adult uh -huh. uh, programs with the government. Uh -huh. The other one were youth programs, yeah. and it operates like the Peace Corps. <coughs> but Phoenix had the senior program, and that's why it's such a model program, because they were doing fantastic things. They had connected with so many of the other organizations in terms of getting services to our seniors and providing services. We have served over a thousand people this year. Uh, and my, my station was at Duet. And I went with Duet as the outreach coordinator to start working with the faith community to knock on some doors and wake folks up with reference to uh, coming out and being able to be of greater service to seniors within the area. So hopefully we're going to find a way to keep that happening uh, and that um, area agency will be able to find some additional funding. But yeah, Miracle is a great program. Any okay. other questions? You got any other questions? I do have one. Okay, go ahead. Um, I wonder, do you have programs or things to help seniors with their co-pays on their like Medicare and stuff. Because I, I've gotten mine handled. Mm -hmm. I found it very difficult to find assistance for that. Mm -hmm. And I, there isn't any. And I just wonder if the churches for the older people do something like that. You may want to call area agency on aging. No ma'am, no ma'am. I don't mean for me. Yeah. I just meant for other people. Well they they may want to call area agency. They don't do anything. And I was wondering, they said to go to the church and things oh. like that. And I wondered if you had help the senior and the co-pays are kind of hard to come by. Yeah, well, we don't, we don't make you co-pays. All of our services that we provide to our neighbors are free of charge. No, 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 and no. What, I meant to you help them with it. No, we, that's what I'm saying. We don't have those monies to be able to help uh, seniors with co-pays. In fact, this year, a new law has come out where all of our volunteers, they were fingerprinted before, but now they have to get a level one fingerprint, which costs $65 per person, and that cost is on duet, so we're paying that cost. So it seems like the more you try to do 
then the more the stuff comes in to destroy the good work that you're doing. But this 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 uh, yellow form here, I'm going to leave these with you because it talks about the community resources that are available for our senior population. And all of these services are free of charge. And so many times our seniors don't know what services are available to them. Uh, recently, um, we were able, as a result of being with AmeriCorps and with Duet, we found out that uh, there was some monies that came down the track that was offering housekeeping to homebound seniors. And the moment we found out about that, we immediately got on the phone and started calling to tell our neighbors to take advantage because we didn't know how long those services would be there. And that, that's what I'm talking about. We need to make sure that the faith community is collaborating with the faith community so that we can take advantage of all the services that are being offered. Duet has been in existence for 30 years. Free of charge, the services have been. And so many of our seniors at least I'm finding, when I go to the faith community, so many of their congregants did not know about the services that were being provided. So so we're just grateful. Yes, sir. Does DUET provide transportation services for older people that need it? Who, are, who do not drive. Yes. Yes. Who do not drive. And you should go there to volunteer. Yeah, if you're interested in volunteering, you can give us a call. At the, at, in fact, I have some forms here if you'd like to fill out. If you want to volunteer, you can fill out the forms today. What parts of the valley do you serve? We, um, the demographics are right now, we go as far west as Litchfield. Mm -hmm. We go as far east as Fountain Hills. <laughs> and then we have the greater Phoenix area. We are not in Mesa, we're not in Tempe. Okay. Okay, we're not in Gilbert, but there are comparable programs there. Okay. So you may want to call the area agency and find out what those other programs are in those other areas. Well, uh, I think you uh, would be available after me for a few minutes to mm -hmm. answer people's questions. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what we try to do is give uh, opportunity for people to make announcements and uh, today uh, Julie Ackman is here. She uh, is interested in starting a uh, support group for uh, parents of uh, children who have been incarcerated uh, with serious mental illness. And so for five minutes she talked about her son who uh, has been incarcerated. Hi, I'm sorry I was locked out for one brief moment. <laughs> Apologize. Um, my name is Ms. Afflin. I'm the director of the National Association of Hepatitis C Task Force. I'm the prison reform chairman as well as the mental health chairman. Um, my purpose at first I wasn't sure of and now that I've been doing the prison ministry I know for sure that that my purpose here on this Could you this stand part. up, please? So oh, sure, absolutely. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, anyway, I was talking about my purpose, and, and um, I have a son who is 25 years old, who is chronically ill and medic mental mentally ill at this point in time in a medical mental health facility called Flamenco. He is now labeled a political prisoner because of my activism. Davin has been put in isolation for 59 to 60 days at a time without any human contact, living with rats and feces and mice in which he's had to flush down the toilet um, to keep them from eating his commissary food. Is this in the United States? Yes, this is downtown Phoenix here, right by the state hospital. Um, Davin was beaten uh, and received 17 stitches on a protective custody yard that's supposed to protect our most vulnerable inmates, which are our men mentally and medically and threatened inmates. Um, he had to seek his own medical attention and was taken to Flamenco, in which he resided uh, for 59 days prior to me sparking a proposal to get protective segregated inmates um, to the Flamenco Hospital, which is the first time in Arizona history. 
Um, I sparked this proposal because my son, being in protective custody, wouldn't be able to get the medical treatment that he needed because of his protective segregation. So I diligently kept calling and making noise and whatever I could do to get them to, you know, at, get some sort of program going. Well, it worked, and Mr. Ryan signed a proposal to, for the first time in Arizona history to have our medically mentally ill protective segregated inmates admitted to the Flamingo <coughs> unit. So it was God's calling. Anyway, there's no, no reason for me to even ask questions. Um, this was an incredible instrument, actually, to, to my prison ministry and, and what, what needed to be done. Um, since then, Davin has been restaged to fibrosis, stage two liver disease, has been promised treatment, and now is being told it was a mistake. Him and 48 others were approved for life-saving uh, life interferon, and now all 48 have been, their hope has been stripped, and they lied to us. So they said the new health care company that's coming into the picture, which is Wexford, it's a privatized prison company, correctional company, will decide his fate from Pennsylvania without even meeting my, my, my young man or talking to him or counseling with him. It will be up to them whether they now pay for these 48 people. My understanding is they already got the funding out of all of your taxpayers' dollars to treat these 48 people. But they would rather have this tax dollar money go to the Corporation Commission, which feeds into Governor Brewer's pockets for private prisons. So I'm going to continue my prison ministry and teaming up with other people, hopefully uh, Reverend here, um, so that we can get the support for the families. Because I know personally as a mother, it is very difficult to have a son that is dying in prison and inhumanely treated. And I think that the family dynamics needs to be worked on uh, with some of these families, a whole family, and a whole, you know, the mother, the father, the sisters, and the brothers, because it affects all of them. So just pray for Davin. His name is Davin. Please put him in your prayers. Um, he's 25 years old. Uh, he's given up, and he said, there's no hope. So, but there is hope. Uh, but those on our prayer chain, Devin has been on our prayer chain in the past. Okay. Request for prayers for him. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, excuse me, I'm sorry. I, I, something you said, I'm confused. Um, you said political prisoner? Because of my political activism, um, I don't know if many of you have seen me. I've been on nationwide television, many talk shows. Um, I have been on the Lou Show. Uh, I've been on many gospel radio tel uh, radio stations as well with my um, activism in, in regards to prison reform and the humanity and the inhumanities of our prison systems in Arizona. Um, I recently were, was on Channel 12 News. Um, I marched seven coffins to the Department of Corrections um, to get their attention to the inhumanities here in the States. And because of all of my high profile motherism, put it that way, um, they're targeting my young man. Um, and uh, he's been mazed, he's been gassed, he's been left in the cell up to an hour and a half after being gassed. Um, it's it's not it's not right to do this to our mentally or sick people. It just isn't. Yeah. I think we, everyone needs to be reminded that this situation isn't going to change until we flush most of the people that are in the legislature. Absolutely. The only, the only way the only way you're going to flush those people is to register to vote and vote. And if everybody in this room doesn't vote, there's something wrong with you. You need to vote for the primary in August, get registered, sign up for a mail ballot, if you can do so, and then be sure to vote in November. Anybody can be on the permanent mail-in voter list. Yeah. And I've got the forms. You need to register, you need to vote, and we need to change, flush the legislature. Right. It's not going to change until we get rid of um, Those our dictators of we have in our my kind in house. Um, that we have right now. Uh, we need to really think about it. It's not about a Republican vote or a Democratic vote anymore. It's about who can do the job. And I have plenty of people who are running right now who are willing to help me with my prison issues. 
Uh, Matthew Sarah, vote Matthew Sarah, 16th seat. Dear friend of mine, uh, Michael Trout, running for the 29th congressional seat of the United States Congress, uh, Boca Raton, Florida. Um, incredible human beings are coming forward to help with my prison ministries and my hope for my, my change. My suggestion is if you could wait around a few minutes and answer people's questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and at this time, I would like to suggest that we have a closing prayer and send it forth. Let it stand. of your world as your love would have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.